Sleep Standing Muetu is both fiction and fact and a fascinating exploration of the Battle of Oraku in 1864. To share more about this incredible book, please welcome to the cafe, Hei McKelly and Ruthie Ihimaira. Yeah. Hello. How are you? Both? Very well. It seems like we just had you on a couple of days ago, but it was a, a couple of weeks ago now. I'm going to bring my bed in here, but I will make it. Good, good, because it's very good for you making your bed. That's um, right. But you're in here with another book. Uh, yes. Tell me a little bit about this story, a bit of a collaboration too. What's the story behind it? Well, you know, this is our version, the Battle of Orako is our version of the 300 uh, soldiers who fought against the might of the Persian army at Thermopylae. Mm. And it's also our version of the Texians who fought against the Mexicans right. during that war. Except in this case, there were women and children involved. Gosh. Women and children. 100 women and children at this particular battle. And uh, I'm curious, how, how, so it's a collaboration between the two of you. How does that work? Well... You tell the story. <laughs> <laughs> well, actually, you know, I, went, I had heard about Hemi because I wanted to learn the real. And so I emailed him and asked to meet. And then he emailed back. And then during the course of this conversation that we had, uh, he, he asked me, well, uh, do you have a story that I can um, translate for my classes at AUT? Mm. And so I had this one, which was only nine pages at the time. And then his translation would have been another nine pages. So mm. this book was only supposed to be 20 pages, and now look at it. Uh, yeah. It's more than 20 pages. <laughs> uh, it is an interesting read, though, the way that you've got fact and the fiction there together. Hemi, what was your input into this? Um, well, as Woody explained, I went to him with the uh, idea of, you know, translating mm. one of his pieces that he'd already published, and he had this sitting ar around, he said, for quite some time. And it's quite a special story because it's from Ngāti Maniapoto. But... It wasn't just Ngāti Maniapoto involved in the battle, there were other iwi there. Mm. So um, when he said, oh, well, you can translate this piece, I was pretty honoured to do that. Um, and my, is, that is my contribution, is the translation of his text. Because the interesting thing yeah. is, is that it's um, basically the first book of its kind, we reckon, isn't it, of both that's in te reo and in, in English? Well, it is. And one of the most interesting things is that Hemi is actually from Ngāti, Ngāti Maniapoto, so he's making me look good. <laughs> but the other thing, too, is that, to be frank, I'm really angry with him because his Māori translation is better than the English. <laughs> <laughs> English is okay. You know? <laughs> and it's interesting that you're from Ngāti Maniapoto because my, uh, I was speaking with Vidi earlier, my uh, children, Riwi Maniapoto, great mm. chief, is their great, 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 great uncle. Wow. I think we've got enough greats in there. I think that's wow. the right amount of greats. So there's that connection well, for me as well. How great is that to be with the descendant I know. of Rewe Maniapoto? Yeah, mm. it was Your incredible. Children. I know. It's and to have that story and a book for everyone to learn more about it, because it clearly was an important battle. What was the outcome of the battle? Mm. Well, it, it was the last um, battle within the Waikato. Um, the outcome is, I suppose, l less important about uh, than what is happening right now in terms of um, where, we've, where we're at today. Um, the, just this year, or last year, the government made the, the decision to um, commemorate uh, the, the land wars that took place on our own lands. And so this year, in October, we'll be celebrating the land wars uh, for the first time. That's a really big step. Yeah, mm. as a national day of commemoration. And so I think Witsi and I didn't know that when no. when we were in the process of oh, writing the book. <laughs> yeah. yeah, very convenient. <laughs> um, we so also, we're looking, yeah. Yeah, we also had a fantastic editor. Who her name is mm. Harriet Allen. And she kept on egging us on. She kept on saying, we could have our photographs in here. We could have first-person accounts in here. Mm. Why don't you do this and why don't you do that? Because, you know, Rotorua, for instance, has now um, become the first bilingual um, city in New Zealand and actually um, your guest who was here before Kelly she used to be a little blonde headed girl in the front of the Kapahaka group wow. in Rotorua <laughs> so all of us are becoming one tribe actually mm. one nation and we have this as part of our history and that's mm. why we wrote it. Connections everywhere um, and the story is about a 16 year old boy and how and his perception of the, of the wars and what went on isn't it? Well, he also, there's also a romance in it too, because he meets this girl. You need a good romance in a book. Yes. No. So <laughs> young You're adults so right. are going to like this as well, aren't they? Um, oh, yeah. I think so, young adults. And also um, adults too, because this is one of those kinds of stories that has never been told. Mm. But it is an internationally important story mm. to be told. And the, and the great thing is, is that, you know, obviously th you were writing it, you know, to be a book, but you've got all these factual accounts in it, and that mm. clearly is quite important in a book like this. 
Um, we're hoping that people will be inspired to start writing their own stories, you know, their own family stories about um, their ancestors, whether they be the soldiers who actually fought against the Rewi or, mm. or the Māori, because together that's what this um, day mm. of the 30th of October this year is all about, remembering the good things and the bad things and mm. coming to some kind of transcendence of both. And, and Henry, I wanted to know a little bit more about you. Quite mm. fascinating. You now lecture at the university, at the AUT, yeah. in Māori. You didn't pick it up until you were around 13, is that true? Yeah, yeah, that's right. What inspired yeah. you to start? Um, my grandmother, I suppose, from a young age, really inspired me to learn the language. Um, but I didn't start learning it, or committing to learn the language till I was about 13, yeah, when it was made available as a subject in school. Right. And yeah. you're learning it now, so it's not too late? For no, anyone says, to I'd love to learn more. Is it, is it yeah. too late? No. <laughs> AUT. Too late. AUT. AUT. <laughs> AUT. <laughs> there you go. Well, if I can, then everybody can. And actually, he and I are hoping to write another book together. Nice. Excellent. Well, no, and it's good. It's important. And you must be both very proud of this. Yeah, very proud. Yeah. Congratulations. Congratulations. Thank you. Sleep Standing is available from bookstores right now.